Well, hello again, everybody. I want to welcome you to Wednesday in the Word. I'm Steve Eden, a senior pastor here at Grace Church, and with me is Brother Don Wheeler, one of our elders. Don, thanks for coming back on. It's always a blessing to be here. Glad you know, to be here with all of you this evening. It was a no-brainer for me to have you come on because this past Sunday we were in Colossians 1, 27 through 29, and then Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Now, all of Colossians is magnificent. But uh, you and I have had some great discussion on the word doxa, D-O-X-A in the Greek, which is God's glory. Right. And I wanted you to come on and just kind of comment and we could banter back and forth about uh, what all the Lord is saying. So let me read this verse. It's Colossians 1.27. To them, the saints, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, or mature. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works mightily in me. That's right. So we see the word glory there in verse 27, the hope of glory. And then Colossians 3, 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth, for you died. What a strong statement. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Right. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you'll also appear with him. Here's that word again, in glory. glory. Right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> to me, this is, for me, this was my, probably the most impactful, tremendous revelation that I ever yeah. received in my life and this occurred a lot of years ago but it really just changed my whole perspective of who God was who I was and it really relates back to this term about Christ being in the believer mm -hmm. and I think what's really important to understand is that when you think of all the religions in the world go find another one mm -hmm. where the God of that religion moves on the inside moves inside you right. won't find yeah. that right and so it really separates uh the gospel from all other religions. So that, true. That God was willing not only to uh, to show us who he is, but also to place who he is in us Amen. so that he could present us like that to himself. Yeah. Amen. And so uh, this brings us to this word glory. And uh, glory is an extremely important word to understand uh, in regarding God. And there's many different types of expressions of glory, but we're talking today about the glory of God, mm -hmm. not just man's glory or the glory of some, some architectural building or something. Oh, sure. The yeah. creation has a glory to it. Mm -hmm. And even in the creation, the glory expresses the nature of God. You mm -hmm. see something that says the, the nature itself lets us see that God exists. Yeah. And I think that's true if we're willing to lay aside our... Yeah, right, <laughs> if we're willing. Yeah, so this word glory, as you said, is the word doxa in the Greek. And uh, I've read Kenneth Wiest, who's a Greek scholar mm -hmm. some years back, but I really enjoy his writing. It's simple so I can understand it, and that's mm -hmm. always good. But the thing that really impacted me was the reality that when we talk about doxa, the glory of God, that this is... All that God is, his nature, self-evident. It's not something that we can do for God. Right. And yeah. It's him showing up as himself. Right. Yeah. None of us have any capacity, <laughs> apart from God, to be the glory of God. Yeah, or to be like God. Only yeah. God can express himself. And let me pause there. I mean, isn't that one of the amazing things you talked about comparing these other religions our, our only hope, I mean, in religion, it's this never ceasing attempt to get to God or be like God or emulate God or Buddha or whoever. But look what he did in Christ that he placed himself, his DNA, his right. very glory on the inside of his sons and daughters. And right. he brought himself to us. We were never going to be able to no. get there. We were never going to be able to look like him, be like him, reflect him. So he put him, so he came to us and then he put himself on the inside. That's why I always say, if you park at the cross, you've missed the rest of the story. Right. That's right. Because the cross uh, made peace with God. Right. But it's the life of God that sanctifies us. Yeah, we talk about what he needs us to be. We talk about going through the cross. 
right. in order to access everything. The cross is kind of like the door. And Jesus even said that about yeah. himself, that he was the door by which every man must yeah. enter. Well, we don't camp at the door. I mean, when you, when you enter a, a church or you enter uh, your home, you utilize the door to gain access to everything that's right. on the inside. And that's what, that's what the cross availed us. And I, th I think the tremendous uh, experience that I've had is that behind that door is an amazing room. <laughs> Right, <laughs> full of so much available to us, yeah. that, and unfortunately, and it's not it's not Christians' fault that this has occurred. It's just it's pretty much the traditions of men. But most of American Christianity for so long was simply God's desire is for us to believe in Him. Mm -hmm. If we if He can just get us to believe in Him, yeah, everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And so most people have that sense about God. Well, I believe in Him. But they've never crossed over into more than I just believe in him, mm -hmm. but that I'm actually believe that he's made me his son or his daughter. Right. And that and in I'm that, partaking of him. Right. And yeah. he's not leaving that up to me mm -hmm. in my believing to produce that. Right. He's actually yeah. placed within me all mm -hmm. the resources that he needs for me to be the son that he desires. Right. And I just need to believe that truth and then walk in the light of it. In that believing, unfortunately we were engrossed and it's still present today with what I call separation theology Absolutely. is that I'm trying to believe intellectually that, you know, God raised Jesus from the dead. And if I'll trust him for salvation, I can go to heaven when I die. But there's not that union. They don't, they don't recognize the revelation you're talking about. You got 1988, right. 30 some years ago that Hey, Christ is actually on the inside of me. Yeah. The cross worked that well to cleanse me and right. pur purify me of all sin to the point that God himself can now really return to his original temple. And that's the... Yeah, know, and, it, and I think it's important to know that it's that's always been his plan. Right, Ephesians 1. It yeah. was always it's the always plan. Always his plan. There's <laughs> always his plan to make his creature, which is creation, yeah. to be able to be like him. Of his kind, as you like to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of and, his kind. And when Adam and Eve were on the planet, he made them after himself in his likeness mm -hmm. and in his image. But there was something in them that caused him to take a wrong direction, mm -hmm. which incurred the access of sin right. into their life. Sin and, and death, so, yeah. But even all that, I discovered was God had already prepared for that because the Bible says it was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Mm hmm so he already had in his mind how he was going to redeem mankind in order to elevate him. A lot of people have this idea that what God wants to do is to get us back to Adam and Eve, to right, get us yeah. back to be in the garden with God, to right. have that. But right. it, actually, he didn't stop there. It's more than that. It's way more yeah. than that. And you know, I just pray that believers would take a moment. You're going to have to get revelation from God. I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was trained up word of faith, and I'm not opposed to that, but I was stuck in my tradition yeah. that made it so difficult for a period of time when I began to hear and read these things mm -hmm. to comprehend it. And a good brother of mine finally looked at me one day because I was saying, I don't get it. I just don't get what you're talking about. Yeah. So Jesus is in me stuff. What about faith? We believe God. You know? <laughs> faith right. in my faith, all these yeah. uh, things. And yeah. uh, and I had to lay that aside. And he said, uh, your problem isn't that you, you can't believe, it's that you won't believe. Yeah. And he said, you just need to sit with the Holy Spirit and ask, ask him, him to, to show, show you. you. And he yeah. did. And when he did, oh, my, my, my. It yeah. was like a whole new whole Bible. New Bible everything whole new made relationship sense. with I God. I began to see the whole Intimacy story. was born. I mean, an oh, inward yeah. intimacy, too. An intrapersonal relationship. And here's not the other just thing. a relationship. 30, but... whatever it is, 34 years later, yeah. in all those years, I've never felt like he left me. Yeah, I've never had that. Where's God? I never yeah. sing those songs like, yeah. "Oh God, come to me." Right, because all so, I got to do is look down. He's right here. He's right. So that's that's so powerful. And I, and I was gonna go here, and you just reopen this door. Let's talk a little bit about the difference with Adam and Eve, because you're the first person that I'd heard share that before. That what we have is beyond oh, what yeah. Adam and Eve had. Yeah. You and I have been born again. Right. With an incorruptible, imperishable seed. That's First right. Peter 1, 23, I believe, 22 or 23. And later on in that and, same chapter, he says, and that seed is Christ. <laughs> right. So right. he, he sh shows us what the seed is to yeah. make sure we understand. And so Adam and Eve, when they fell, you just said you've never experienced 
this this sense of separation from God or but we know immediately when Adam and Eve fell there was definitely a disconnect there was definitely this separation even Romans 8 Kyle read it on Sunday prophetically that nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus right. him his presence in us is the fulfillment of that passage right. you know and that word working in us but but Adam and Eve obviously felt separation and disconnect right. and we have something that's even greater because when I stumble, if I choose disobedience like Adam and Eve sure. did, there's no separation there. Now, my, the flesh or my emotions may start experiencing a reality right. that feels a certain way, but the real reality, the truth is that Christ is in me never to leave me or forsake that's me. Right. That seed cannot be corrupted it cannot perish. Right. Uh, so, and I, I said a lot. Really, but if you want to comment on that, you can. Well, really, uh, really, I think for us as Christians, a uh, real key to that is that when you do a piece of stupid, as you like to yeah. say, or if you're disobedient, if you if you act in sinfulness, which is really just independence from God, right? You act independently. You did your own thing. First of all, the Father has put in the creation consequences for that, so it's going to instruct you. Yeah. Because there won't be life in it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is that as you said, you now have this new conscience within your spirit right? that, that wants to uh, motivate you back to God. That's right. Back as, towards righteousness. Yeah. As a matter yeah. of fact, and uh, this, this is, I don't, we don't have time at this point to yeah. share on all this, but regarding the heart, that God is really dealing with our heart, which is just the inner part of our being. It's, it's all of us together in the inner, innermost being of who yeah. we are. It, it's what drives our life. And Often, uh, we have this thought that if I, like the scripture said, I had a guy say this to me one time, I think I blaspheme the Holy Spirit. I said something right. against him, and man, I just am afraid of God now. Uh -huh. I just, and I'm like, you're afraid of God? Why? Yeah. What is telling you to be afraid of God? <laughs> right. See, his heart still was for God. Right. He was lamenting that. But his head right. had come into some idea, That's some right. ideology right. that wanted to draw him away from his heart. Yeah. And all I could do is keep trying to draw him back to his heart because once your heart has got Jesus in it, he's it. not leaving. That's so good. And so we have to actually work against our inner self yeah. to stay away from him. And when the spirit of truth comes, he'll abide with you forever. Jesus will never leave you or forsake you, Hebrews 13, right. 5. So what we're getting at is that every day you and I prove and demonstrate that our heart has been turned towards Christ and towards righteousness, right. we prove it one of two ways, either by the things that you did righteously in obedience that were, you know, love-filled and you celebrate those, or you still prove you belong to righteousness on the inside when you do a big piece of stupid and lament it, that you don't yeah. want to camp there. That's you don't right. want to go waller in it and, and, and uh, hang out there for a yeah. week. You did it, and then there's this inner... Uh, prompting of the Holy Spirit that says, hey, that's not who you are. Let's right. don't live there. Let's get up and keep going. And I think that's just an eye-opener for people, and it's really in Romans 6, that Steve is a slave now to righteousness. I once was a do slave. Do we believe that? It's true. Well, I do. Yeah, I know you do, right? And I, it's so true. Yeah, I once was a slave to sin, and I did things sinful by nature, but now I've got a new nature at that's work right. within me that's massaging my heart on a that's daily right. basis that I belong to righteousness. That's and right. so when I find the pig pen, I immediately repent. I get up and say, you know what? Right. That's not me. I'm not going to stay there. Right. And I, so I think that's one of the beauties of what God did to, to equip us for his purpose, mm -hmm. which by placing the perfect son within us, he remedied Adam's fall. Right. He remedied it. That yeah. this can never happen again because we're not, re we're, it's not replacement of Adam. Mm -hmm. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, in union with Christ, he's a brand, he's new, a brand new creature. That means mm -hmm. a creature that's never existed that's before. Right. Mm -hmm. Jesus being the firstborn, which is the federal head, the first pattern son yeah, after prototype. all that would come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And so that is what elevated his creature. And look, I'm not saying that to say we had anything in effort to do anything to accomplish that. Right. All we can do is either believe it or not. If you believe it, you can actually walk in the light of that and be what the Father wants. That's why the yeah. Bible says without faith, mm -hmm. it's impossible to please him. Why? Because it's through faith 
that we receive the grace of God. And for me, the grace of God and the Christ of God are synonymous. Right. Everything so that grace Christ is, a person. is in us. Yes. Yeah. Grace is a person. The word is a person. Truth is a person. Life is a person. The <laughs> armor so of God good. is a person. <laughs> All so of these good. are a person. And that, so God's personable. Amen. He put a person in us. Yeah. To Amen. make us a whole new person. Amen. And now we have a whole new life. That's why when people try to fix their old life they're they're going back to something that's actually dead you can't yeah you can't revive a dead person you just got to let him stay dead and, yeah and, and reckon him dead over and over that's again that's it and so we don't die to self mm -hmm. because self's dead you, you can't die any more than you're dead Col colossians 3 says that you died and, and the only life, life you have expressed. right to be expressed is the christ right. life that's right. in you now and yeah. i think that's the challenge uh is that the life of god is hidden right and, and I'm sure if you're like me, it's like, God, unhide it, mm -hmm. show it out. Yeah, but there's something, it. here's what I see in it. There's in that, that God is always keeping us dependent on him because he knows that's how we work. Yeah. So it's like if, if, uh, if, if God gave you the whole uh, plan for your whole life, mm -hmm. you'd probably walk away from God and try to walk it out. <laughs> Go try to imitate it or But make he just it gives you every step. He just takes you a step at a time. Amen. And he keeps you dependent. And that's, that's right. Good. And that's, that's good a good thing. Us. Yes, that's a good you thing. You know, I saw something, Don, I've never seen before. When Adam and Eve fell, they were fallen. If you and I stumble or we choose unrighteousness in a decision and we commit a sin, if you will, we are not fallen. Right. We still belong to Christ. Right. And that's what we were getting at about what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ. And this was the plan. I know you have it open to Ephesians 1 from right. before the foundations of the world that you would belong to him as his offspring, that his, his seed, his DNA would actually be on the inside of you. Right. Even though I might do a big piece of stupid, I am not fallen and I am not right. going back to uh, well, now I'm that old creature again. No, I'm I'm a brand new creation, brand new species, and I'm in Christ. And that work of Christ, that work of salvation and grace you were just mm -hmm. talking about, is training me to live godly. It's right. empowering That's me right. to choose righteousness. That's and right. so when I stumble, uh, Proverbs 24, 16, though a righteous man stumble seven times, seven times he rises again. And that's all because of Christ right. on the inside. Yeah, and I, I think it's important, you know, that we understand I, that's that's a powerful word that a lot of people misunderstand or don't see it or ignorant of it that grace itself is instructional that's right yeah a lot of people think grace is just remedy for sin in right. other words it's a doctrine or, yeah it's like yeah. well i can just continue to be a heathen and live mm -hmm. like the world because god graced it yeah and it's like it's not that's not what grace is that might be a inclined to be towards mercy god is merciful that's true that's right but grace is christ in you it's the empowerment to live the life that god desires for us to live let me read this and i'll just let you continue to comment titus 2 11 for the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men so he's a person. That's Salvation's right. a person. Grace is a person. He's teaching us that uh, denying ungodliness, worldly lust, we can live soberly, uh, righteously, and godly in the present age. It is, it is the grace and the salvation of God that's not just a fixed doctrinal position right. of justification. It is at work in us right. in a work of sanctification. And that's why our work is not to is not to act like God. <laughs> right. Yeah. Our work is to let the word of God instruct us mm -hmm. and bring with it the persuasion, the faith of God mm -hmm. that accesses the grace of God. Yeah. And the grace of God is all God's energy. Yeah. That's why Paul would make the statement, well, I've worked so hard, you know, I've labored to, oh, towards right. you, and yet, yeah. but it's not I, it's, it's God's grace working in me. Right. It's it, The scripture says that, it is God who works in you, both, both to the will. will, which means give desire oh, and to do. Wow. Well, how does that come? As we, It's the Word of God. The wow. Word of God has within it the faith of God. The faith of God has within it the persuasion of God to get into our heart. Now, it comes to and our that head. Is belief. That's what real belief and faith is right yeah, there. It's, it's, an, it's actually in a, birth persuasion. It's actually a law of the Spirit that operates within the heart of the believer. And... And My the goodness. heart is, a, is an important issue because so many people assent to God in knowledge, just, mm -hmm. just mental assent. Mm -hmm. And that's where we just get stuck in, in beliefism. And yeah. that's where we get just biblio-idolatry, the worship of the Bible itself, mm -hmm. rather than by the Spirit knowing who this is talking about and that that person 
really does truly live in us and will for eternity. We have eternal life because his life is in us. Yeah. He is in us as that life for as, eternity. As a young believer, I took a tour, much like you, through the faith movement in regard to I spent so much time trying to work up faith right. and work up belief and all that. And now my choice really is is what he said, abide in me. Remain in right. me, I, live in me, keep my word yep. in front of you, keep my spirit at work within yep. you. And it is always working, but participate with it. It's really the life of God that's always, we can trust. I mean, that's he's trusting it. it. Isn't right. that the hope of his glory? Yes. That he believes that by placing his son in us, he's going to work that work within the believer. Right. And because we're, because we're so self-aware, we read a scripture about Christ in you, the hope of glory, and we, we just apply it to us. Yeah, but let's switch that up a little bit. What if that's God's hope of glory? Right. What if that is actually God's? Which, when the word hope in the scripture can mean two things, it can be I'm a wishing and a hoping. Mm -hmm. That's man kind of hope. Yeah. Or it can be the God kind of hope, which is there's an expected end to this. There's an expect. Yeah. There's, there's a certainty. earnest. There's a certain. There's a certainty to it. To it. Yeah. It's, it's not that well. He's just hoping it happens. It's like it just means that faith is going to activate this in the future. Yeah. That's why. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Right. So when we have an earnest expectation about the promises of God, mm -hmm. faith is the thing that persuades our heart to receive it. And so there's a substance of it in that faith. Yeah. And so, and God's a provider of it all. Mm -hmm. It is a law of the spirit. That's why we don't live by the law of sin and death. We, <laughs> that we're done with that. Yeah. It already killed us. Yeah. If you're trying to live by the law of sin and death, just the law, mm -hmm. you're actually trying to like revive an old dead guy mm -hmm. and get him to cooperate with the yeah. things of God. That's right. And God said, no, I put that to death on the cross. That's why when I died, you died. Yeah. And so that's great. You, I've it. wiped it all away. Now right. you can come under this new covenant that here's the key. I didn't make it with you. I made it with myself. I made it with myself. <laughs> right. you, it can't be broken. God's in covenant God's with breakable. his son, Jesus Christ. That's who has the covenant. And you're in Christ and Christ is right. in you. That's what brought you into the covenant. That's right. So the only way that this can fail you as a Christian is Christ has to fail. Oh, no. He's no. not failing. He's not going to fail. I hope that gives you confidence and, and hope. And in so what's our role in that? Believe with your heart. That's yeah. what do we do? We do we do we didn't cause the oneness, but we get to participate with it. Right. How? I'm going to believe with my heart because Romans 10:10 10, 10 says with the heart man believes, not just intellectualism. Right. But I'm going to believe with the heart. I'm going to choose to abide. I'm going to choose like we read on Sunday Psalm 1. Joshua 1, I'm going to keep yep. his word in front of my yep. eyes day and night. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to eat on him. I'm going to feast on him. That's the role we have. His yep. life is the one that actually does the work through our participation. And also, I, I, because I was came through the word of faith, I thought there was a time I thought, well, if I had good faith, I'd have no unbelief. Or if I had unbelief, yeah. I'd have no faith. I've yeah. since then realized that, that's, that that doesn't work like that. It's not yin and yang. Yeah. It is that God's word brings faith. I, I want to say something that's going to be controversial. Okay. Faith is so easy. Okay. It, it is not difficult whatsoever. Because faith comes from him, right? And his yeah, word. it doesn't say faith is work, though. It doesn't say faith is something you, you know, work yourself into. Yeah. It says faith comes. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Now, that hearing is important because it's... It's the word of God, Rhema, which means it's something you hear in your heart. Hear in your heart. So you got to get it past your head. Hear in that's, your heart. That's why, that's why sometimes people will say, why does the preacher keep talking about this or that grace or love? And I, and I like to look at him and go, well, once you get it, yeah. he can move on. We'll start walking it and he'll quit declaring it. But here's the thing. Christ in me, 34 years later, I still love to hear it. Yeah. It still produces in me that reality that I can live in. It yeah. gives me confidence, man. Yeah. And, yeah. and so instead of conjuring faith, what I hear you saying is, hear the voice of the Lord. Sit with the Lord. Hear. Faith right. is already in his rhema word, you know, his right. relational word that he's speaking to you. It's, it's lit with faith. Right. That's you're, why you're saying you're, it's easy. Faith it's is him. easy. Your enemy is unbelief. Yeah, that is yeah, the key. The enemy is unbelief. And if you go back, even if you go back to the Old Testament, you're going to find out what really conquered believers was unbelief yeah it was what god constantly yeah. was trying didn't to help enter them rest no. didn't enter promised Why? land through right. their unbelief right That's so right. you can have here's the thing you can have a great level of faith but you can also have a great level of unbelief mm -hmm. just what are you giving your heart to yeah because it's within that inner part of your being that this process takes place mm -hmm. and so hey 
When he tells me, leave this alone, it's not good for your heart, I know what he's saying. It's good for you to walk in light of faith, mm -hmm. to, to not let unbelief get built up, because unbelief is what causes me to, to be distracted from what is true. Yeah. And, and the world wants Amen. you, to, the world is inviting you. I mean, the world's rife with unbelief. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you an example. Because uh, they're not of faith and they're not of the spirit. Yeah. They're totally carnal. And this could, yeah. this could be for so many different things, but how many people just get, the magnet draws them to Jerry Springer type movies? Uh, yeah, right, right. You can't tell me that's, that's elevating your heart in God. <laughs> and that's just one thing, but it can be many things that the world offers you as a magnet to drag you away. Yeah. And look, it's not the people doing it. Yeah. It's yeah, the spirits behind it. It's the it. spirits behind it. Amen. That are actually Remember that. and people, you know, because deceive being deceived, or let me say it this way, deceiving people comes from deception. Yeah. You know, and it's not knowledgeable people. Yeah, that's truly that does happen, but not often. It's usually they are as deceived as anybody. Blind leading the blind. Blind history, leading yeah. the blind. So. Well, let's finish up and you read Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. This will just put a nice little bow on it, and then I'm going to make a comment on this passage. All right, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, past tense, blessed, blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Christ. So it's in the arena of him. Just as he chose us, again, in, in him, him <laughs> before the foundation of the world. Isn't that interesting? Before Adam and Eve, yeah. he chose us in him. That, that was, was the plan. mode that he would choose his creature was mm -hmm. in Christ. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we, that we should be holy, set apart for God, and without blame, blameless. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Before him in love, mm -hmm. having predestined us to adoption as sons, both male and female, I like to say, by yeah. Jesus Christ. How are we adopted? By Jesus Christ. To, to himself, himself. Mm -hmm. according to my desire? No, to the good pleasure of his desire, his mm -hmm. will. Amen. Amen. Wasn't begrudgingly. No. Good pleasure of his will. And then he predestined us to adoption. This was the plan all along. Right. So what I wanted to just conclude with tonight is something he keeps, you know, restating and restating is, is that I want you to experience the reality, if you will, the gnosko. I want you to know the truth. So we've talked truth tonight, but he's moving us from just Christ lives in me, amen, Right. to Christ is living in and through me right, right. now. From a doctrine right to an now. actual reality. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And to me, that's what gnosko is, that I'm experientially participating and knowing God through the truth that he's provided. That Christ, yeah, Christ lives in me, and I can say amen, but I'm living as a son and a child of God right now, today, and I am participating with that. That's my real reality. That's the truth about what we're living. Amen. It's in that realm. Well, I want Amen. you to pray for us, and just let's bless those that have Amen. been uh, watching and listening tonight. Amen. So, Father, I just thank you for what you've done. Yes, Lord. Your plan is perfect, and I thank you for inviting yes, all yes, mankind yes, yes, into yes. it. You're not withholding your arm back for anyone, anyone who will decide to come. You, you invite them into your plan. Yes. And so, Father, I pray that, as it says in Ephesians, that the eyes of our understanding and those listening. Yes. Amen. That the, another scripture says the eyes of our hearts mm -hmm. would be enlightened by the Spirit of God, that we would see and understand the things that we're describing today, that those listening will be able to see that Christ truly and literally lives on the inside of them. Mm -hmm. and that you would give them a desire to look inside to see him, to find him, to discover the glory, because you are the father of glory. You placed glory within us by placing Christ in us, yes, you and your glory is a manifestation of your person and nature. Mm. And so for this world to see Christ, we need to see Christ, Yes, and so that we can cooperate <laughs> with him and, and uh, yes, put aside right. things that cause unbelief. Lord, I thank you for everyone listening. Mm -hmm. And with all my heart, I just pray that they'll see the hope of glory, which is Christ in them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.